Okay. People talk about it. Hello, everybody. Dr. Rick Wallace dropping in on you. Hope everybody is having an unbelievable start to your week. Uh, here we are on Tuesday. Hopefully, you have gotten off to a great start. You have a clear idea of what it is that you are desiring to do for the week. You have a clear focus. Uh, the vision is so important in the, in the pursuit of a particular goal. Uh, you must have a clear idea of what it is you're pursuing so that you know if you're headed in the right direction and you can recognize it when you do achieve it. Um, I just want to take a real brief moment to stop by and talk to you this morning about the importance of understanding the law of attraction. And, uh, you know, ever since The Secret came out, uh, everybody's been talking about the law of attraction. The thing is, the law of attraction isn't some new idea concept. The law of attraction has been expressed and explained over centuries upon centuries in different ways and forms. The law of attraction can be seen in the same conduit and idea of faith, just simply a different vernacular. I think that one of the problems that we deal with, especially in the way of religion, is that we get caught up in semantics because you don't say it a certain way. But all of a sudden, it no longer is viable or valid. The truth of the matter is, if you can explain something in a way that a person may understand it better than some other way, I think that's the most important thing is that we gain an understanding. Faith is a very powerful force, and it plays a major role in the idea and concept of, of the law of attraction. Uh, the law of attraction, actually, when you truly break it down and look at it, isn't actually about attracting anything it's about believing in something and aligning yourself with those beliefs in the way that you think in the way that you speak and what you believe your faith in a way that you align yourself with it and a part of aligning yourself with it is tuning into the right frequency and vibration of the thing you want and I think that's where a lot of people get confused when we talk about the law of attraction is, okay, I got to make something come to me. No, the truth of the matter is absolutely everything, good and bad, exists in space and time. It's all there. It's all there. Whether it's sadness, whether it's anger, whether it's bitterness, whether it's love, whether it's gratitude, whether it's wealth, whether it's poverty, it all exists in the same space. The thing is, every last one of those things has its own frequency. Let me give you, let me give you an example. If you ride in the car, I live in Houston. Okay, the station that I love to hear is our, you know, uh, old school R and B with a little uh, mixture of new school R and B and hip hop. Uh, Magic one hundred two point one. And here's the thing: if I'm listening to ninety nine point nine, which is soft rock, or one hundred four, which is alternative rock, and I want to listen to some R and B, I don't have to attract it. The, the, the frequency is already in the air. I simply have to change what I'm tuned into to get what I desire. So if I'm no longer desiring to listen to soft rock or alternative rock and I want to go R&B, I simply move to 102.1. I've changed the frequency. And now what has already been there, I'm tuned into. That's the reality of it. It's that simple. If you want to be bitter, it's something out there to be bitter for. If you want to be angry, there's something out there to be angry for. If you want to place blame, there's something to place blame for. If you want to raise your level of thinking and accomplishment and existence, there is a space for it. And the higher that you raise your vibration or your frequency, the more you enter into a realm where everything around you starts to intensify in a positive notion. You push the negative things out of the way so you have greater, quicker access to the things that you desire. So if you get to gratitude, you're talking about if you measure gratitude, when you're thinking and you're grateful, you're in a state of gratitude and thankfulness, you're measuring a minimum of 500 hertz. And you can go up to somewhere around 556. You got love, uh, 556. You And here's the beautiful thing. Uh, the idea of discernment and learning is the highest that anyone's measured at around 750 hertz. Now you're talking about being in alignment with the divine, with God, with the creator. 
with one-on-one -on -one with the designer of the universe and the universe itself all in one and that's where you begin to hear not audibly but at something that is and at a level that's actually more clear than the audible uh, thing that we're normally used to hearing through our ears when you can hear with your spirit you're directly in alignment with your purpose with your goals with your desires and the purpose part is outside of yourself that was given to you in, in, in your design by the Creator but when you're in alignment with all of those things now you're able to tune into the right frequency to accomplish the right thing there's a frequency for the home there's a frequency for the marriage you desire there's a frequency for the business you want to start there's a frequency for financial aptitude and advancement and the thing is you have to tune into the frequency it's not about attracting it to you it may appear that way that's where it came from it feels like okay if i get right here it comes to me no it was already there the good and the bad, the ugly, the beautiful, it's all there. It's what you decide to tune into. It's what you decide to tune out. And it's what you decide to tune in. And that's the importance of it. you got to tune in. Here's something I'm going to leave with you real briefly. Like I said, this isn't going to be one of those long, drawn-out uh, things that I love doing. I love to talk. I love to share. I love to teach. Uh, I love to give of myself. I'm real big on vision. You have to have a vision. The vision helps set the frequency. People have asked me all, a lot of the times, how can you be in, in a certain position? Because here are the things. You're going to go in and out of storms in life. You're going to go in and out of different situations. You're going to struggle and meet and encounter the vicissitudes that are just simply a part of life. They're coming. They're going to roll into your paradise a lot of times at the most inopportune moments. That's not what determines whether you're going to get on in this life or not. What determines whether you're going to get on or not is how you respond to them. But here's the thing. People will look at me and see me in a certain situation and tell me I was in denial. Why? Because I'm not uh, becoming frenetic and unglued. Why? Because I'm not acting fearful. Why? Because I'm not losing my, 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 my ability to remain calm, centered, and focused on the total outcome outside of the uh, the momentary circumstance. See, I have something in my spirit that's directly connected to my source. Um, I call my source God. You call your source whatever you want to call it. I'm not here to tell you that. But what I can tell you is this. When you connect it, there's a part of that spiritual connection because spirit is now connected with spirit. My inner spirit connected with my God spirit and they're communicating. That's what I'm telling you about being on that frequency of communicating. Here's the beautiful thing about the spirit. The spirit of God communicated to my spirit, and then my spirit is being uh, being made aware of the fact that what I'm going through isn't my lot. It isn't my my end in in result. So what happens is, although I see the circumstance, there's something in my spirit that disagrees with my circumstance because. I am in direct communication with something greater than myself, and the answers to, this, to, to the enigmatic issue of the moment has already been revealed or is on its way, and I know for a fact that where I am now is not where I'm going to end up, and I'm able to actually, because I believe in vision, see the vision beyond the moment and celebrate inside of the vision I see. So while I'm operating in the present circumstance, I'm living in the future victory, and that's why you see me smiling. That's why you always see me calm. That's why you don't see me becoming unglued because I already know the outcome and the outcome is not what the circumstance is trying to present. That's faith. That's faith. That's, that's operating in a manner that you see it before you see it. The substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. But anyway, here's something that I need to share with you and it's something that John Osaroff uh, one of the leading voices uh, when it comes to quantum physics or the law of attraction and it's something he talks about a lot the law, the law of Goya and it's this and I believe it 100% and I have been able to prove it out in my life I have seen so many other people prove it I have not I have yet to seen it operate uh, outside of this particular uh, parameter is as much as you need to understand the law of attraction you must also understand that it's absolutely useless without it being merged with the law of Gaia and when I first heard it I'm like Gaia what's Gaia and it's simply get off your ass 
What does that mean? You can wish for it all day. You can hope for it all day. You can sit up and do your incantations, your meditations, your speech, and you can have it all lined up. If you don't get off your behind and actually put in the work that is in car direct correspondence to what you say you desire, what you say you believe you're capable of, what you say you know you should have, then it's absolutely for nothing. You cannot have one without the other. You must have both. Now, the funny thing is, if you get up off your butt, you'll get some things accomplished, even if you're not in alignment. It's just a lot of hard work, and it's a very slow, frustrating process. But you can have all the thinking going on. Your imagination can be on overdrive. But if you don't get up and you don't put in the work, you'll sit right there, and opportunity after opportunity will pass you by. You've got to be able to focus and center yourself and be where you need to be, but also up and moving about. It's uh, George Bernard Shaw said, the people who get on in this life are the ones who get up in the morning and go out and find the opportunities they are looking for. And if the opportunity is not present and they can't find it, they create one. Those are the ones that get on in life, not the ones sitting around hoping, wishing, and, 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 and waiting on something to happen, waiting on somebody to discover you, waiting on somebody to give you an opportunity or a chance, waiting on the right moment, waiting on the right time. There's no such thing as the perfect moment, the perfect time, the perfect opportunity. The thing is, when it's time to do it, it's time to do it. It's time to focus. It's time to become centered. It's time to see it for what it should be and then make it happen. You've got to make it happen. It's not going to happen on its own. It's not going to happen because you pray for it. It's not going to happen because you wish for it. It's not going to happen because you speak it. Yeah, there's some power in designating things. There's some power in, 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 in declaring things. There are some things that are established the moment you declare something. But if you don't follow what you've declared with an action that underwrites it, it dies. So much of what many people have started has died because they didn't follow it with a corresponding action to underwrite what they had established in their declarations. Look, I'm going to get off of here. Uh, thank you for letting me stop by. Thank you for allowing, allowing me to have a little bit of your time. Um, if you're looking for an opportunity to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, the email address is there. If you want to take advantage of uh, the last offering of the Rapid Change Breakthrough uh, sessions that we're offering, uh, it's a great opportunity to work with yours truly on a short-term basis, but still get some benefit. But if you really want to work with me, I'm talking about uh, six months or longer, email me and let's talk about what we have to offer and how I can help you in accomplishing the things that you desire to help. Have a vision, write it down, make it plain, and walk it out. On that note, I'm out of here. As I always say, I live my life on full so that I die on it. My challenge to you is to do the same thing. On that note, I'm out of here. You guys have an unbelievable day with a little special announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time you know outside of the businesses that i run like myriad business solutions the visionetics institute odyssey media group i also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in houston dallas and other areas uh, i'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you.